it comes to landscape photography and YouTube, it's hard to deny the influence of this British photographer, Thomas Heaton, on this creative space. He was pretty much the first landscape photography YouTuber, and he's inspired people like me to kind of pursue this, whether it's like for a career or and a profession, or it's just a hobby and something fun to do on the side. He's definitely inspired a lot of people in this industry. Woo, these ways are nuts. A part of that inspiration and the influence is the influence on gear. And as we all know, we're here on YouTube. We love to talk about photography gear. He's really influenced the landscape photography YouTuber space with things like the Shimoda backpack, as well as the tripod setup that I'm going to be reviewing today. The sky just opened up, so excuse me while I take this shot before it's too late. <laughs> Beautiful stuff happening right now. I hope those shots came out okay. The low clouds are kind of blocking the nicer looking clouds, but let me just quickly talk to you guys about this tripod here. Woo! Ah, that was a really big, good wave. Ah, oh well. Anyways, this is the Thomas Heaton tripod, and it's a really solid tripod for landscape photography. Uh, there's some pros and cons to it, but overall, I would say I really enjoyed this tripod. Uh, I've used it for a few years, by now and it's still in really good shape. There are a couple of things that kind of prevent me from actually using this as my main photography tripod and has inspired me to kind of hunt for better options out there. But let's first talk about what's good about this tripod. All right, so real quick, this tripod is comprised of mostly two components. We've got the iFootage TC7 as the legs. And these legs are super lightweight. I think the they weigh around four pounds and they get super tall. Uh, if it's a three section tripod, which helps with stability, allows the tripod to extend to super tall heights. As you can see, I'm five foot four and we're kind of on uneven surfaces, but you know, it gets about to, you know, five feet or so. So a very good, decent height. Uh, the second part of this tripod is the uh, Acrotec long lens head or the Acrotec panoramic head and it's a two-way pano head. And unlike your traditional ball head, it really allows the photographer to have more precise control, especially when doing panoramas. And why this ball head works really well with the TC7 is the fact that the TC7 also has this leveling base here on the bottom, which allows the user to really quickly level out the tripod and take the panorama. Anyways, the sky's starting to open up again, so. Excuse me, <laughs> while I get back to shooting. We've got this nice little glow that's happening and uh, you know, it would, maybe it'll make for a cool shot if we get some nice waves to it. But there are a couple of things about this tripod that I really like. It's a really lightweight tripod in comparison to the other taller, bigger tripods out there on the market. This one has to be one of the lightest, coming in at around four pounds. Ooh, that's the one. Woohoo, that's the one right there. Who cares if we get a burn in the sky? That one was a nice wave. Oh man, hell yeah. So yeah, like I was saying, one of the favorite parts about my, this tripod is how lightweight it is. 
It has to be one of the lightest big boy tripods out there on the market. Uh, for a tripod that gets as high as it is, I'm surprised that it doesn't weigh more. Um, but it really makes taking it out... Wow, that was another good wave. <laughs> it really makes taking it out on a shoot really easy. Another thing that I really like about this tripod is the lever locks on here. Most tripods use a traditional uh, twisting mechanism and, and those can come with its own challenges um, because the twisting mechanisms often have rubber and those get delaminated and then you're just twisting the lock and it's not actually locking. These lever locks make it really easy to just undo, clamp it back down, and then you're locked. So it's a real easy mechanism to just flip back and forth through. The only issue that I have with these lever locks is that they're really a bitch to clean because uh, how complicated they are, really taking it apart takes so much time and so much effort, it really, <laughs> it doesn't, uh, it doesn't bode well for uh, if you're really trying to maximize efficiency on time. And especially when you shoot around seascapes, it makes it really difficult to have to clean the tripod every single time after you shoot because everything is covered in salt, salt water, and sand, and you really don't want that getting in, the, in these lever locks. But if we're just talking about simplicity and ease to use, this tripod is probably my favorite. Try to see if I can grab a quick shot of this here with this last bit of golden light. So as you saw earlier, we had our camera spread out nice and wide. The legs dipped into the sand and it provided the maximum stability. And that's the kind of position you want any tripod to be in, not just this one. Um, but when you have a surface like sand or mud and you can really stick the tripod legs into something, it makes any tripod that you use gonna be much stable because now you're not reliant on the tripod legs so much as you are just reliant on this nice, steady and stable landscape. The real test of stability comes when you're on a surface that doesn't provide you the support that you need, such as surfaces like this, where it's rocky, it's loose, it's slippery. How does a tripod like this do with that kind of stuff? Because like I mentioned earlier, it's not the, the heaviest tripod, so the weight is not gonna stabilize it a little bit more. So on surfaces like this, where it's rocky, it's slippery, uh, maybe I'm hiking up on top of a ridge or maybe I'm in an area like this where the waves are crashing around me. I have noticed that this tripod does struggle a little bit with the stability of it. And that's a benefit and a drawback again, like I say all the time. Uh, the benefit of this tripod is, is that it's so lightweight, uh, so it's really easy to take onto location. But yeah, if there's a big wave that comes in that's maybe a little bit more powerful than that one. Um, this tripod can struggle a little bit when it comes to managing the stability of the camera. So if you tend to find yourself shooting in these weird situations where your position's up here on a rock and you know, you're not sticking your tripod into mud or sand as often, uh, I, wouldn't, I would probably look elsewhere and look for something that is, has a little bit more weight to it and, kind of, and can kind of add that stability for you in situations where you don't get it from the landscape itself. Alright, so yeah, you can see this tripod is super lightweight. You know, it's a, it's a very lightweight tripod and I really don't mind carrying it out into the field. This tripod has no issues uh, when it comes to portability. But the problem that I have with using this tripod for portable shoots where you're hiking up on top of a ridge or traveling, packing it up in a suitcase and whatnot, is that it doesn't fold up as small as I would like it to. But let me clean this thing out first so I don't get this thing super dirty. When the tripod is folded up, it's not the most compact solution. And I'm a small five foot four guy. I'm sure Thomas Heaton, at least he appears on his videos to be well over six feet looks gigantic when it's compared to my body size and my stature but for somebody who's taller like him 
this would definitely be a lot more manageable in terms of its folded size. Now you want a tripod that can get tall so that you can dig the tripod into stuff like sand and certain surfaces, but you also want a tripod that can fold up so it can be manageable when you're hiking and carrying, carrying it. And this is, even for taller people, this tripod would not work well if you're trying to go up a hike and you're trying to duck through trees and stuff because you have a little bit of the tripod hanging off on the bottom and a little bit of the tripod sticking out above the top of your camera bag. So to kind of combat this, I picked up another tripod from iFootage called the TC5. And this guy is a little bit more manageable, a little bit more smaller and subtle, and it packs up and folds up nicely. It fits in my suitcase when this one, the TC7, will not fit in my carry-on suitcase. And I actually hacked it in a way where I took these four section legs, unscrewed it from its attachment point, and use the bowl mount from the TC7 as a way to kind of get the leveling base on a smaller and more compact tripod. And it worked well for a little bit. But after a while, I realized that this tripod, without its center column, like how I have it now, does not get up very tall. And for most landscape photography situations, you don't need to get that tall. But there are a lot of situations as well where you do need to get relatively tall. So you can see this thing doesn't reach the height that I would want it to. Whereas in comparison, this guy gets to a very desirable height. Like that. So big difference here. Without the center column, this guy doesn't uh, get, get quite as high as I would like it to. But you know, the center column you can throw in there and you can get this uh, tripod up to a very similar height as this one. But like most landscape photographers will tell you, center columns are the enemy of sharpness because it basically creates a little flag and makes the camera really easy to uh, fall over. You really want a tripod that can get tall without the center column like this one. I just wish that this tripod folded up a little bit smaller and was a little bit more portable and packable, especially for travel photography. Another thing about this tripod that I'm not a huge fan of is the feet. So you get a nice flexibility when it comes to the feet. You get this kind of uh, hybrid foot where, where there's the, uh, the spike here at the end. And if you twist this part, you get a nice rubber foot end. For, if you're shooting a lot of like indoor stuff, it's good because you have a little bit of that flexibility if you're on a surface that you don't necessarily want to scratch up, then the rubber works good for that. And if you are outside and shooting on grass or dirt or sand, uh, having that small teeny tiny spike does add a little bit of extra grip and stability if you're trying to dig the tripod into something. But again, I'm not a huge fan of the how small the spike is. If this foot was fully unscrewable I, and I could put my own spikes on there, uh, I would do so. And I think Thomas Heaton even modified his tripod so that he does have longer spikes on the edge of the, his tripod. So, you know, unless we do some sort of modification like that, we're not going to be able to get the longer spikes at the end of the tripod. So yeah, this tripod is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty decent. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's the best tripod out there on the market. It definitely has its pros and its cons. The pros being how lightweight it is. The lever locks just make for a very simple solution for when you're setting up the tripod. The leveling base in combination with the ball head make it really good for panoramic photography and it makes it really easy for that. If you are somebody who does a lot of short distance shooting, and by short distance shooting, I mean just kind of parking your car, walking out onto location, setting the tripod up, taking your shot and walking back to the car. Or if you do a lot of hiking that's relatively flat and you're not climbing and maneuvering through a lot of obstacles, this tripod will work really good for you. And the fact that I've been using this uh, as much as I have been for the past few years and it's still in relatively good shape, it's held up very nicely over the years. And the fact that it's this lightweight and can get as tall as it can is another pro for this tripod as well. Uh, in terms of the drawbacks, again, even though this tripod can get tall and is super lightweight, 
It doesn't fold up as nice as I would like it to. If you take this on a lot of hikes where you're trying to jungle through trees and branches, this tripod will get caught on certain things and sometimes make it extremely difficult to maneuver through those challenging terrain. And if you do a lot of traveling and if you really like to minimalize your packing and your travel setup, this tripod doesn't necessarily fit that well into a carry-on luggage. In fact, I've tried every single way to fit this thing into a carry-on luggage size and, uh, and I have been unsuccessful in that department. So you would have to get either a dedicated travel bag to pack this in or pack it in your checked bag, which is not necessarily the best idea, especially on those shorter trips where you kind of just want to grab your stuff and go. If you shoot a lot of seascapes, it's not going to provide you with the best stability, but it's a benefit and a drawback that you get when you get a tripod that's this lightweight, you're going to lose a little bit of that stability. But anyways, yeah, that's going to about do it for this video. I just wanted to share with you guys my thoughts about the Thomas Heaton tripod setup. Overall, it's a pretty good setup. Uh, it's not the setup that I currently use and in next week's video I'll talk about the setup that I am using and how it addresses some of the drawbacks of this tripod um, While also maintaining most of the good things about this tripod So we'll see you guys in the next one for that Make sure you hit that like button if you found this video useful leave a comment if you have any questions uh, Subscribe for that video that's coming out next time and we'll see you guys then peace out